outgoing revenue secretary Tarun Bajaj has made simplifying capital gains tax almost a war crime. We can sympathize with his call. Let's just take a look at the bunch of rates we now have. First, definition of what is long term differs from asset to asset. It's over one year for equities, over two years for REITs and over three years for debt. Now, the tax is 15% uh, plus surcharge uh, and CES, which means 17.47% for equities. That is short term. Equities long term uh, capital gains tax is 10%, but add uh, surcharge and CES, it becomes 11.684% uh, or thereabouts. For debt, first, a mutual fund is defined as a debt fund if it holds less than 65% in equities. Okay? Here, the short term is your income tax slab. And for most investors, it would be 30%. Now, the long-term tax. The long-term tax, remember, in equities, it is 10. But for debt, it is 20% plus surcharge and cess. It is 23.296%. But in debt, you have indexation benefit. That is, whatever gain you make will be reduced to the extent of inflation. But no indexation or no lower long-term tax if you buy the debt outside mutual funds. Okay, and it's not just 17.47%. I'm going back to equities. It's not just 17.47% uh, for short term and 11.64% uh, for equities for long term. This is only for people whose total income is less than 50 lakhs. The rates change if you earn more than 50 lakh up to 1 crore. And it can even go higher in certain categories for 1 to 2 crore, for 2 to 5 crore, and for over 5 crore. And then there are different rules for capital loss set off, as opposed to, uh, of course, uh, capital gains. So that's a welter of rules. Can this be simplified? Clearly, it needs to be. And uh, how, what should the way forward be? I have with me guests who will be able to help us. Uh, we asked Dinesh Kanavar, the CEO of Dhruva Advisors, Sudhir Kapadia, national tax leader, uh, Ernst EY. Neelay Shah, Managing Director, uh, Kotak Mahindra Asset Management Company, and Mr. D.P. Singh, Deputy Managing Director and Chief Business Officer at SBI Mutual Fund. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, Nilesh, first up, can you tell us if there are any low-hanging fruits over here, anything that we may expect as early as the current budget? So, I'm not really expert on taxation like Dinesh Pai or Sudhir Bhai though I am a chartered accountant like them. But from a market point of view, I would like budget to plug the tax loopholes. Today, a zero coupon listed debenture converts interest income, which is normally taxable at income tax slab, as has 43% in a case like me, to long-term capital gain and gets taxed at about 10% plus surcharge. Now there is a cottage industry of people converting interest income to capital gain and reducing taxation by 33%. It's an easy loophole to plug. I hope budget takes care of that. The second loophole to plug is ULIP versus mutual fund. In mutual fund, when you move from debt to equity or vice versa, you end up paying short-term or long-term capital gains tax. In ULIP, that is not taxed you can do as many transfer as you want between debt and equity and still not pay capital gains tax. Now, clearly, both ULIP and mutual funds serve the same purpose. There is a need to ensure that there is similar tax treatment. So these are the loopholes which needs to be plugged over and above the issues related to tenure between debt, equity, real estate, issues related to tax rates from normal slab rates to 10, 20% and issues related to structuring that all needs to sort out. Okay, uh, got that, uh, you know, plugging loopholes. I think you mean that they have this market-based debentures uh, which are structured uh, based on the Nifty's gain or loss, right? Uh, I've heard about that cottage industry. Uh, Mr. Singh, do you think uh, that uh, the tenure of long-term and short-term for uh, uh, equity and debt could be brought closer. Uh, I've heard from policymakers that it may not be good to make it identical 
because equity is inherently more risk. But do you think, uh, uh, you know, a long term uh, LTCG for uh, equities could be made two years or debt brought down? Yeah, definitely. If uh, Lata, if uh, we we think at when it was brought from zero to ten percent, it was almost thirteen years. It was zero percent, and it was uh, equities were made zero to ten percent. Now debt was also one percent, one year, and it was made one year to three year. So I think there there is a case. There is a case. There could be identical. Uh, somewhere in between, there there is a case for making it twenty. Per, I mean, uh, uh, up to two years. If if uh, there are real, real issues. I think this will sort out a lot of uh, the, the the cases. What we are, when we are talking about, there are so many uh, rates, so many tenures. I think there there is definitely a case of uh, of uh, bringing them closer and making uh, more uniform than ever before. It's just that if you make equity long term into two years, then perhaps. Uh... Uh, you know, the, the government may be making a little less money. I don't know if that will... Uh, oh, they'll make more money because there will be more short term. So perhaps that's something that can tempt the government. Uh, Mr. Kanabar, have I uh, outlined all the slabs or are there more? Uh, in the table you sent me, there was a different rate with STT, with indexation, without STT, with indexation. So it's more complex than I presented, right? Uh, well, it is, uh, Lata, and... Uh... Uh, it, it's a veritable uh, uh, nightmare for advisors uh, because you need a chart before you before you can really advise a client. So let me make two comments. First, for example, you mentioned about uh, equity and you mentioned about no indexation, but then you have a cost rebase of 31st uh, of 31st January 2018. 31st. So when there was no capital gains tax on equity, uh, capital gains was brought in and therefore cost was reset to 2018. So that, that is one other thing. Then if you happen to be a non-resident, then you get uh, a, a currency uh, sort of coverage uh, in a sense that you compute capital gains in the currency of investment. And then, of course, uh, you do not get indexation, etc. So it, it is veritable um, sort of a nightmare looking at each type of taxpayer, each type of instrument, the rate and the period difference. Um, and... You ask uh, 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 Nilesh about the low-hanging fruit, and, and Nilesh rightly articulated about this cottage industry and use a very right term for converting uh, sort of what is otherwise interest into a capital gain. But I have another point to make that probably the government needs to relook at the maximum marginal rate itself. I do not think 42% is a rate which one should look at. We brought it down to 35. Uh, that is 30 plus surcharge. And then we put sort of a super rich surcharge. And a surcharge cannot become a permanent fixture, Lata. It has to be for a specific purpose, for a specific period of time, with the surcharge continuing. And when you go push, start pushing rates at 42%, that's where you tempt people to relook and sort of restructure. Uh, uh, I, I can tell you that I've seen people who are very comfortable saying 35% looks a very right thing, but when they go to 42, then they start restructuring to say, does this make sense at all? So probably there is a need to relook at that, and therefore the need to relook at surcharge. I would agree with the point which was made earlier that you cannot have this multiple uh, tenures. Um, uh, and you know, I, I know that the stock market will not like this, but one year to be considered as long term probably doesn't make sense. I was hearing the revenue secretary earlier, and he mentioned that last year there was a demand that he heard from the housing industry, where the housing industry wanted a uh, long term to be one year, and he looked at somebody in the eyes and said, that can one year ever be a long term from a housing perspective? It cannot be. Mm. But one year cannot be a long term from any perspective whatsoever. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I mean, this will be music to the ears uh, of the government as well uh, if uh, short term can be extended to two years uh, for equities. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Kapadia, what is your sense? Uh, do you think that there can be some initial announcements in the budget? Because overhauling the whole thing may take a long time. Mm. So should we be prepared for something in the budget? So, so Lata, first of all, compliments to you and Nilesh uh, being very modest, saying you are not tax experts. But I think, if I may say, you articulated the issues perhaps much better than I can speak for myself. I won't speak for Dinesh. But, <laughs> but coming to you know what uh, uh, what can be done. So, I, if I if I may you know take a step back, uh, it was alluded to. I think there has been a significant reform already. Uh, in the sense we have amended two significant tax treaties, Mauritius and Singapore. 
to bring horizontal equity between domestic and foreign investors on capital gains taxation, on uh, especially on equities. Then we have uh, also brought in, as rightly pointed out, well, Mr. Singh, uh, long-term capital gains tax after a long, long period. And grandfathering was, some complexity was required because grandfathering was fair. So fairness was also taken care of. So I think I must commend the government for uh, bringing in these two very significant reforms, which previous governments were not willing to bite the bullet. And we have seen, I mean, the figures and Nilesh will be a better person to say this, but uh, I don't think it has had any deleterious impact on the markets. Now, the part, part about the reforms, uh, I think uh, the one easy uh, and short, uh, low-hanging fruit, Lata, the point you made, is clearly alignment uh, of the holding period, uh -huh. because there, I agree with all the comments made, there doesn't seem to be much merit, particularly in you know, real estate uh, holding period for long term being two years, debt being three years, listed being one year, unlisted two years, so on and so forth. Mm. I think specifically on debt in a country such as ours, where uh, a lot of people still uh, depend and look up to debt for their investments, particularly with inflation and higher rates of interest, uh, there is merit in certainly shortening the holding period for debt. And the point, very important point you made, Lata, I, I don't have the figures and it's an interesting analysis to be made for another debate. But actually, when you increase the you know velocity of transactions by mm. reducing the holding period, you might actually get a higher tax intake, right? Oh, because yes. today I'm tempted to hold back yeah. uh, till the holding period is is achieved. So holding period rationalization, I think, is a is a low hanging fruit. Got it. The last point on rates, you know, we we must uh, uh, be mindful that you have a wide rainbow of uh, uh, policies across the world. Yes. Uh, as we know, you know, in the U.S. Uh, uh, I mean, the rate is still high on long term. The short point to be made here is, I think the way we are in India, we want to still encourage more formalization uh, in the economy. It is good to have these slightly attractive rates for long term capital gains. As far as short term is concerned, Lata, I don't think there is any complexity. We can okay. uh, talk about the broader rates, which Dinesh yeah. was alluding to. Yeah. But short term capital gains has to be taxed as normal income is all over the world. Okay. And therefore, the normal rate supply. So I don't think this is a complexity feature okay. as far as capital gains taxes. Okay. Concerned. Yes, Mr. Kaparia, you know, I have to go into a break, but there are lots more questions on uh, why should you get a tax benefit only if you buy debt through mutual fund and not if you buy outside as well whether the tenures of uh, short and long term for debt and equity need to be brought uh, closer, uh, equated. All those questions after the break to my guests. Is super fast zamane mein, car insurance claim